On April 26, 2011, Satoshi Nakamoto sent his last known email to Gavin Anderson, describing that he didn't want to be seen as some sort of mysterious shadowy figure. Satoshi had already stopped making forum posts a few months before this. Unlike YouTuber goodbyes though, Satoshi was being dead serious, as we haven't heard anything from him in over a decade. Satoshi didn't leave empty handed though, he took 1 million bitcoins with him which are currently worth about 60 billion dollars. At this point, if Bitcoin were to hit some of the bullish targets in the hundreds of thousands or millions, Satoshi would easily become the world's richest person and possibly even a trillionaire. But to this day, we don't know the identity of Satoshi, and ironically, he's become more and more of the mysterious shadowy figure that he didn't want to become. So why did Satoshi leave and what happened to him? Taking a look back, Satoshi wasn't always so quiet. When Satoshi started coding Bitcoin in 2007, he knew that he would have to build a strong community around the project for it to actually build momentum. At first, he simply targeted crypto enthusiasts who could help him develop Bitcoin. In October of 2008, he used a cryptography email list to send out the first white paper of Bitcoin. This attracted the attention of some of the most famous cyberpunks in the world such as Hal Finney, Gavin Anderson, and Nick Sabo. While these guys are well respected as the early visionaries of Bitcoin today, Back in 2009, these guys were more or less just weirdos working on some sort of underground currency. Satoshi launched version 0.1 of Bitcoin a few months later in January of 2009. At this point, Satoshi was regularly conversing with early Bitcoin developers like Hal Finney and Gavin Anderson, but his public discourse was rather low. However, this would quickly change with the creation of BitcoinTalk.org. As the name suggests, BitcoinTalk.org was a community dedicated to discussing the current state and future of Bitcoin. Satoshi was actually the one who created the forum and he made the first post in November of 2009. So clearly, he wasn't trying to avoid the spotlight at the start. In fact, he posted quite heavily. Between November of 2009 and December of 2010, Satoshi made a total of 575 posts, which means that Satoshi was making 1-2 to two posts every single day. Through these posts, Satoshi generally addressed concerns and criticisms surrounding Bitcoin. Sometimes, he even shared his opinion on certain aspects of Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies as a whole. For example, in one of his last posts, Satoshi agreed that miners should get a fee for all transactions, IP changes, and renewals. But just two days after this, Satoshi would make his last post, and it wasn't some sort of goodbye post either. His last post was actually about how Bitcoin was extremely vulnerable to a DOS attack and that this, along with several other vulnerabilities, needed to be addressed. Maybe this was on purpose. It's possible that Satoshi wanted his last post to draw attention to the shortfalls of Bitcoin. Or maybe the decision to stop posting was made after he made the post. We'll probably never know, but there are a few likely reasons as to why he decided to leave, starting with decentralization. Nowadays, many crypto investors slash traders don't really care about the fundamentals or principles of crypto. They may be a proponent of digitalized currencies, decentralized finance, and blockchain technology. But oftentimes, this is not the primary motive behind their investment. The number one reason they invested into crypto is to make money. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, but this demographic shift from cyberpunks to investors has substantially altered the expectations of the crypto community. Many investors actually like having a CEO type figure like Vitalik Buterin with Ethereum and Charles Hoskinson with Cardano. These founders are able to directly address issues with their cryptocurrencies and provide investors with future outlooks like Ethereum 2.0. But in the early 2010s, the crypto community wasn't a very big fan of such leaders, as it went against the principles of crypto. The entire point of a decentralized currency is to eliminate the presence of a central authority. The existence of Satoshi himself was a clear violation of this fundamental principle. So one of the main reasons Satoshi left was likely to embrace the community and eliminate the central authority. I'm confident that Satoshi planned on leaving the community from the very beginning. But I do think it's possible that he was forced to leave earlier than he originally anticipated due to two concerns, starting with the risk of creating an underground currency. In Satoshi's last email to Gavin, he describes that he doesn't like how Gavin, as well as the general crypto community, sees Satoshi as a dark, mysterious figure. He goes on to emphasize that this simply made it easier for the media to paint Bitcoin as a pirate currency. Given the decentralized nature of Bitcoin, it's already super prone to illicit activities. I mean, if you just scroll down to the comment section of this video, I'm sure there's an abundance of crypto experts named Mary Jane that can double your money in 2 hours. And though Mary Jane is a terrible person for scamming desperate individuals out of a few hundred or a few thousand dollars, 
The crimes associated with Bitcoin are oftentimes much larger like tax evasion, money laundering, drug dealing, ransoms, and who knows what else. Now, these crimes are going to take place with or without Satoshi. But it's only a matter of time until the media paints Satoshi as a nefarious person himself. You might be saying that the media doesn't cast a negative light on Vitalik Buterin or Charles Hoskinson. But there are two key differences between Satoshi and these two. First of all, this was 10 years ago when the general consensus was that Bitcoin was either a scam, a pirate currency, or both. And second of all, the identities of Vitalik and Charles are public. So there's no speculation as to who might have created it. With Satoshi though, it wouldn't take long for the media to make connections between him and some international fugitive. It was just a matter of time until we saw articles suggesting that Satoshi created Bitcoin in order to fund and operate his underground arms network. Wait, never mind. That's already a thing. Can you imagine how rampant such speculation would be if Satoshi was still posting but remained anonymous? At that rate, it would basically be impossible for Satoshi to remain anonymous. And that brings us to the final reason that Satoshi left, which was a threat to his anonymity. Now, we're not sure about how Satoshi personally feels about publicity and being a figurehead. But it's pretty clear that he had objective reservations to being a figurehead. Even if Satoshi left the development scene and gave up his role as the leader of Bitcoin, if his identity was known, he could never truly eliminate his day-to-day -day influence on Bitcoin. For example, if you sold some Bitcoins to just buy a house, you'd see a plethora of articles questioning if Satoshi is dumping at the top. Similarly, if you were to support a new crypto project, that crypto would likely go to the moon in 20 minutes. The best modern day example of what Satoshi's influence may look like is Elon Musk. When Elon announced that Tesla bought Bitcoin, Bitcoin was actually experiencing a pretty serious correction. Bitcoin had corrected from 40k down to 27k and looked like it was about to test a breakout at 20k. But Elon's announcement skyrocketed Bitcoin to 60k instead. Similarly, Elon announcing that Tesla will stop accepting Bitcoin was the start of the summer bear market. Now, honestly, I don't think Elon was actually the key reason for the pump in February or the dump in May. Bitcoin whales simply used Elon as an excuse to pump crypto in February and take profits in May. But as far as the media and the general public are concerned, Elon pumped and dumped Bitcoin. And I don't think I need to even mention Elon's influence on Doge. The truth is, even if Satoshi gave up his central authority, he could never avoid influencing the markets if his identity was public. And in 2010, his anonymity was in jeopardy. As we previously discussed, the media was likely to pump out increasingly negative articles on him the longer he was anonymous. This would eventually lead to a tipping point at which Satoshi would either have to live with Bitcoin being branded as a pirate currency, or he would have to reveal his identity to prove his good intentions. Satoshi didn't want to go down either of these paths, so he left the road before the situation got this bad. Even if the media didn't get him though, the crypto community was out to get him, not in a nefarious way, but out of curiosity. A large portion of the Bitcoin community was curious as to who created Bitcoin. They were collecting the crumbs that Satoshi accidentally left behind and starting to piece together his identity. Also, let's keep in mind that we're dealing with a group of super nerds who like to code Bitcoin during their free time. If Satoshi kept posting, it was just a matter of time until someone found his address or his Facebook page. So at the end of the day, Satoshi left to protect the decentralized nature of Bitcoin, shift the focus to the community, avoid becoming a figurehead, and protect his anonymity. Ironically, I actually have a full video on the top contenders for Satoshi. But anyway, now that we answered why Satoshi left Bitcoin, we only have one question left. Where is he today? Well, the general consensus is that there are really only two possibilities. The first option is that he's dead. Maybe Satoshi didn't stop posting because he was trying to protect his anonymity. It's possible that Satoshi left because he was ill and eventually died. The top contender supporting this theory is a man named Hal Finney. Hal Finney is a cyberpunk who was involved with Bitcoin basically from day one. In fact, he was the recipient of the first Bitcoin transaction. But unfortunately, he was diagnosed with ALS and became increasingly immobilized before he died in August of 2014. The other leading theory is that Satoshi never actually left Bitcoin. He gave up the ally Satoshi, but he continued to be part of the community using his real identity. This way, he could still work on Bitcoin but avoid all the pressures of being Satoshi. The top contenders for this theory include Gavin Anderson and Nick Sabo. Gavin Anderson was the one that led Bitcoin development after Satoshi left. So maybe Satoshi just handed the reins to himself. On the other hand, Nick Sabo developed something called Bitgold, which was eerily similar to Bitcoin way back in 1998. Maybe he decided to launch a refined version of Bitgold called Bitcoin. There is also the possibility that Satoshi is just some random programmer that we've never heard of, but this is the least likely option. 
In all likelihood, Satoshi was probably a well-respected figure within the crypto and cyberpunk community well before Bitcoin was a thing. But that's just what I think. What do you guys think happened to Bitcoin's founder? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you respect Satoshi's choice to stay anonymous. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.